Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Photoshop challenge. My name is Howard Pinsky, design evangelist here at Adobe. Hope you're all doing well on this Tuesday morning, afternoon, or evening. If you are tuning live here on Behance or YouTube, let us know in the chat who you are and where you're tuning in from. Carol and Jennifer and General Kenobi and Wade, Megan, Steve, great to see all of you. Hope you're all excited for another challenge. Today is all about healing methods in Photoshop, and we have probably 6,492 different ways to heal objects and blemishes in Photoshop. It's a little bit of an exaggeration, but just a little bit. We have a lot. And of course, we have the new generative fill, which I'm going to be showing you the power of that today. So let me go ahead and hop over to my screen and we're going to dive into things. We have a lot to cover. And we only have about 25 minutes. So yeah, we're going to try to get through as much as possible. Of course, we have a lot of training videos on many of these healing methods if you do want to catch up on some of that stuff later. All right, so we're going to start off with this photo. And if you don't have any photos of your own with blemishes or objects that you want to remove, first of all, I'd be very surprised. But you can also go to stock.adobe.com. We have a free section if you don't have any credits. So you can search for basically anything, uh, let's say a city, for example, and you will find a lot of results, 54,000 results for cities. Now, of course, you know, when it comes to stock photos, most of them are pretty perfect in some ways. So you may not find photos that have blemishes and things like that to remove, but definitely go there and check that out. So in this first example, we're gonna start off with the spot healing brush, one of my favorite healing methods in Photoshop. And you can find many of your healing methods over to the left hand side in your tools bar. And this one right over here is our spot healing brush. You can also press the J key on your keyboard to access it. And you might notice at the very bottom right hand corner, there's a little arrow and that indicates that, <coughs> excuse me, been dealing with this infection, I just can't get rid of it. That indicates that there are more healing tools inside of this section, right? So we have our spot healing tool, we have our remove tool, that's also a new one too. Healing brush tool, patch tool, content aware move tool, red eye tool. I haven't used the red eye tool in a million years, but it's there. And you can cycle between them by holding down your shift key and clicking the J key just like that, right? So how does a spot healing brush work? Well, if you take a look at this photo here, we've got this little pigeon guy that kind of snuck into this photo and we wanna remove him. Well, all you have to do is make your brush a little bit larger. You can do that with your left or right square bracket keys on your keyboard or at the top, you've got your brush options or you can right click on your canvas and adjust from there, right? So we can increase the hardness a little bit if we wanted to, maybe about 40%. And boop, click, and he's gone, right? So definitely experiment with the different hardness levels. It really depends on what you're trying to remove and the surrounding area. So this one, we might want a little bit of a harder brush. Click, and he's gone, right? It does a lot of computational things in the background, many of which I don't understand. It's looking at the surrounding area, textures, shadows, lighting, all sorts of things, and using that information to remove your object. You can also click and drag, so you can brush over an object to remove it as well, just like that. Now, what you might be noticing is if you take a look at the layers panel, we've got our background layer. Poor pigeon, Wait, saying poor pigeon, RIP. I'm sorry, pigeon. Pigeons, yeah. Um, we've got our layers panel, right? And there's just one layer. So all the healing that we just did, just a moment ago, very destructive very destructive. So if you're, you know, 50 steps ahead in your project and you want to go back and bring Mr. Pigeon back, well, too bad. He's gone forever. Now, however, what I would recommend is non-destructive healing. So what's nice about all these healing tools is you can use separate layers. So if I go ahead and create a new layer down here at the bottom of my layers panel, boop, just like that, or the command shift N shortcut on your keyboard will also create a new layer and you can name it right over here. Maybe I'll name it healing, right? Let's get rid of this one. And now with your healing tools, what you'll want to make sure, and some of them are different, but on the spot healing brush, we've got our sample all layers option at the top. If I were to keep that turned off and brush over Mr. Pigeon, nothing's going to happen because it's sampling only the layer that we have active, which is completely blank right now, right? So if I go ahead and turn sample all layers on and then brush over Mr. Pigeon or Mrs. Pigeon, 
right? And I brush over this rock over here. It's removed them, but it's placed them on a new layer. So I can turn that layer off. I can turn that layer back on. I can also add a layer mask right down here at the bottom. Boop. So now with the layer mask active, I can now either choose subtract from mask on my contextual taskbar or add to mask. Subtract from mask is going to give me a black brush. And now I can paint Mr. Pigeon back in just like that, which is amazing, right? So that's a bit of the spot healing brush in Photoshop, super useful, especially for smaller areas. Now, the remove tool, let me create a, one more new layer. The remove tool, which is also with the spot healing brush is one of our newer healing tools. And it works very similar. You might not really understand what the difference is right away, right? If I grab the remove tool, brush over top of it, it's gonna do its thing. And in a moment, you're gonna notice it's a little bit slower and it's kind of processing. So you might be wondering why it's slower, right? It kind of did the exact same thing as the spot healing brush. Now that second stroke was a lot faster. So it's analyzing your photo a lot more. It's using much more advanced AI to remove the object. So it's hypothetically going to give you a much better result, right? So again, spot healing tool is great for smaller areas, smaller blemishes, um, especially if the texture around those areas isn't as complex. The remove tool will help you get there a little bit better. Um, so, you know, play around with both of them and see which one works better. Now there is another one. Let's see over here we have um, this photo here, there's some stuff in the background, right? We can certainly go ahead, I'm gonna create another new layer. We can certainly go ahead and use the spot healing brush, but these areas are a little, little <coughs> excuse me, a little bit larger. So, you know, they'll work, right? It does a pretty good job. But we also have our healing brush tool. Now, what is the difference? Because on the surface, it kind of looks the same, right? Now at the top, I'm gonna make sure we have current and below or all layers turned on. So I'm sampling both layers, right? This works very similar to the clone stamp, which we haven't touched on just yet, but it works by using a source. And what you wanna do, you wanna create a source. And this, the source is telling Photoshop what to sample from as you start brushing, right? And to create a source, you can hold down your alt or option key on the keyboard, and you'll notice this little, I wonder if I can zoom, whoop, nope. Hold on, I wonder if I can zoom in there. Nope. Does, oh, it kind of works, but it creates this little target, right? And that will tell Photoshop that it's gonna sample from that area. And it's good to note that the source moves as you brush. So I'm gonna sample in this area here, and I'm gonna start brushing. And it's starting to paint that area away. Now, one thing that you're gonna notice as you start doing this, is you're gonna start noticing a little bit of blending going on, right? So it's looking at the surrounding area, textures, lighting, shadows, all sorts of different things, and it's blending the image together, right? So if I were to hop over to my clone stamp for a second, right over, nope, it's not there, press the S key on the keyboard, there's the clone stamp. It's gonna work in a very similar way. So I'm gonna make my brush a bit bigger, make sure I'm sampling from the current and below, hold down Alter Option, click, and then start painting. Now what you're noticing with the clone stamp, it's not doing a bad job, right? Because the textures are, you know, fairly similar, but it's literally copying from the source onto the new area that we're brushing. Like literally, right? It's taking the exact same textures, exact same objects, exact same everything. In this case, they're leaves and it's copying them. So if, you, if I zoom in here and I copy a source right on this, you see this little wood knot and I go over here, it's the exact same thing. Right, so definitely keep that in mind. In some cases, this will work beautifully, almost has a face on it now, um, but keep that in mind. Whereas if I go back to the healing brush tool, right over here, and I do the same thing, I, I create a source right here, and then I go over here, we're gonna see a preview of basically the same thing, but as I start brushing, it's going to start healing that in. So it's not gonna be the exact, that's a terrible job I'm doing, but it's not gonna be the exact same, right, as the source. It's gonna kind of blend it in as best as possible. So you're not gonna have too much repetitive textures and lighting and shading and all sorts of fun stuff, right? All right, so that's a look at the spot healing brush, the healing brush, and the clone stamp.
In the remove tool, we have a lot of different objects or uh, you know, healing tools in Photoshop, as you can tell. But, and those are good for like smaller areas, but when you get to much larger areas in Photoshop, that's where things become a little bit more complex. You know, in this photo here, it's an Adobe stock photo, but you know, this runner on the right kind of ran into the photo. He's not part of the group. He just kind of decided to join this group and we go on him gone, right? There may be cases where you take a photo where someone snuck into your photo and you just want that person, poof, gone. Now we could start by creating a new layer and we could start, you know, trying to remove this guy. So we might grab our, definitely not the spot healing brush, right? But maybe the healing brush tool. And, you know, we might sample this and kind of move over here and uh, it's okay because it, the healing brush tool is looking at the surrounding area and trying its best to blend this object out. It's kind of giving us this, these weird brush strokes, right? So, okay, we can go to our clone stamp and do the same thing, right? And that's kind of working, but what you're gonna realize with, you know, healing to large objects like this, especially in a photo like this where there's perspective, things just become very mucky and it becomes very tedious, right? And then there's areas like this where the building just doesn't line up properly. We can try to do something like this and it kind of works. Let's try something else, right? Now, over to the right, we're gonna go ahead and grab the object selection tool. And what's nice about this is it allows us to hover over the different objects or people in this case. And whoop, I'm on the wrong layer. And it will allow us to select them. Right, so I can select this runner over here to the right, and it's gonna do its best to select the runner. Now this looks pretty good. Now one thing I like doing when healing like this, right, is expanding the selection a little bit. This just gives Photoshop a touch more room to work with. And I might be noticing there's a little bit that was left over, so I'm gonna switch over to my quick selection tool and just paint this back in, right? Just like that. All right, and in my contextual taskbar, I can hop into this section here, expand it, and maybe we'll do, let's say 10 pixels. Again, to give Photoshop a little bit more room around it. Now, one of the other healing tools in Photoshop is the content-aware fill. <laughs> my mind just went blank. And this will work very similar to the spot healing brush, where when we activate it, it's gonna look at the surrounding area and do its best to fill that in. Now, again, very similar to the spot healing brush, if it's a complex background, we might run into some problems. So under the edit menu, I can go down to content aware fill, right? And we have our content aware fill dialogue. And as you can see, it did an okay job in some areas, whoops. But in other areas like the building in the background, it just doesn't work that well. Now, of course we can tinker with all these, um, you know, options over to the right, but it's not great, right? So let's go ahead and explore generative fill because this object here, we can certainly remove him, but it's gonna take us a while. So I'm gonna press on generative fill on our contextual task bar. And in cases where we want to remove something from a photo, all we have to do is leave this blank and then press generate. And what Photoshop is doing right now is it's not only looking at the surrounding area, but it's also looking at the rest of the image to figure out how to replace this runner. And in a second, it's, it's on, oh, ooh, there we go, right? It's, it's going up to the cloud, doing whatever it needs to do, and then it removed this object, right? Or this person, I shouldn't call him an object. Uh, we also have three different variations that we can cycle between, just in case we want something a little bit different, but this one looks pretty snazzy. And if I turn this layer off and then back on, it literally looks like he was added later. Like look at, the, look at the job that Photoshop did. It replaced the building almost perfectly. It followed the perspective of the fence in the background. It successfully recreated that light pole at the bottom. And Content Aware Fill and Spot Healing Brush and all these other healing tools are incredible. They do wonderful things for smaller areas, but when it comes to larger areas like this runner, it just completely removed it, which is, mind-blowing, it's amazing. So another example, and this one is probably a little bit more aligned with what you might run into, right? You're on a family vacation, you get someone to take a photo, 
It's a great looking photo, but there's all these people in the background. And sure, it makes the photo look more real, right? I posted this example on uh, LinkedIn a few days ago and someone just went bananas and they're like, you know, just hire a professional photographer with lights and cameras and this and that and get the people out of the way. I mean, that's just not reality, right? And some people might want the people in the background because again, it makes it more real. But there are cases where you just don't want them there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new layer and we're gonna work on selecting these people. Now, you don't have to be very careful with your selections, right? You don't have to go in and select each individual person in the background. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my lasso tool from the tools bar and I'm gonna make a very basic, messy selection, right? And maybe we'll leave the pigeons in because in the first example, I did remove the pigeon. Um, so we'll leave some of the pigeons in and I'll select you know, part of this guy's pants. I'm not too worried about a perfect selection. And we'll do something like this. And boop, there we go. So we made our first selection. And I'm also going to include the right section as well. So I'm gonna hold down my shift key to add to my selection. And we're going to go ahead and select this area here. We'll also add the chairs in the background. Again, not too worried about a perfect selection. There we go, and boop, just like that, right? So we have all of the people in the background selected. Now, because I made a messy selection, I'm not too worried about expanding that selection because it is kind of outside of the people, right? And just like before with the previous example, I'm gonna hit generate to fill and press generate. It's gonna do its thing, it's analyzing the photo, it's looking at the building and perspective and all sorts of different things. And in some cases, you know, the boots and the pants and all things. And just in a moment, if the internet is cooperating with me, the people are gone. Again, we have different variations that we can go through. And sometimes it won't be 100% perfect. You might want to tweak it a little bit, but we just spent maybe a minute getting rid of all of these people. And now we can spend a little bit more time fixing some of the imperfections, you know, maybe create a new layer, and then we can jump into maybe our spot healing brush, which is right over here. Maybe remove this, right? Remove that a little bit. I don't know what this is over here. Maybe it's another pigeon. Well, goodbye pigeon. Might wanna drop the hardness a little bit because it is pretty blurry back there, right? Yeah, get rid of that pigeon, and there we go, right? We've removed the people. Now, what we can also do, let me hide <coughs> Let me hide this again. We can go back to our generative layer, right? And you're gonna notice in the properties panel, we can not only cycle between the different variations, but we can describe what we want. So let's say we wanna replace those people with more pigeons, right? A lot of pigeons, and I'm gonna generate. So it's basically, <coughs> It's basically doing the exact same thing as it did before, but this time it should hopefully add some additional pigeons. Probably people in the chat are gonna be a little bit upset that I'm replacing people with pigeons, but you know, for whatever reason, sometimes it gets it right. Sometimes you've got this pigeon with a very long neck. I think I prefer the original example Unicorn saying, get well soon. I, I've i been trying to get well. I got sick probably two months ago and I'm just dealing with this lingering cough that just will not go away. It's frustrating, but it'll go away eventually. All right, so we've gone ahead and removed some people from our photo. What's the next one? Dogs. You know what, let's not do that just yet. Maybe we'll come back to that because I promised on Twitter that I won't, won't remove too many cute pets. But this photo here, right, this is all about replacing objects. So there are some cases where you might take a photo. Maybe you're doing a photo shoot or whatever it might be, and you get to this area here, this, you know, the photo editing stage, and maybe you, you want to re remove or replace some of the objects. Now let's try a traditional method, right? Maybe content aware fill, for example. So let's go ahead and grab the spot healing brush. It's not what I, even what, what I wanted to grab. The object selection tool, and we will start by selecting this layer here, and maybe even this one over here. I'm holding down my shift key and clicking. And if I need to select anything more, I can either grab my lasso tool, make a selection, right, just like that. And I'll probably want to expand it a little bit. 
maybe by a few, maybe 10 is too much, maybe five pixels. There is a leaf in here, so I'm gonna uh, select that. And then let's try the spot healing brush or the spot content aware fill. There's so many tools, I just get them all mixed up from time to time. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit and then fill. And I wanna make sure that content aware is selected. Again, you can also go to edit content aware fill to get that dialogue. But let's go ahead and just try this and press okay. And it did an okay job, but again, you're kind of noticing some of the limitations of content aware fill. It grabbed something from over here. Why? Sometimes I don't know, um, but it did. Now, another tool that you might want to try out is the, over in the healing tools, the patch tool. Now the patch tool has a content aware option. Cause if I were to use a regular patch tool, I can move this over and it, kind of does an okay job with some lighting and shading and all that fun stuff. But I can also choose content aware, which uses the same content aware technology, but for the patch tool, right? So I can move this over, try to line up some of the lines nicely. You know, not everything's gonna line up perfectly, but it, you know, kind of does an okay job, right? Again, smaller areas for these healing tools work really well. But generative fill, we're gonna go ahead and just choose generate and it's gonna do its thing. And in just a moment, you're gonna notice how much of a better job generative fill actually does. Well, in this case, it replaced the object, which, I mean, it looks okay. That one looks not bad, but it's kind of a good thing that this happened because you might be wondering, why did that happen, right? I didn't enter anything in, in the text field, but it replaced the object. And usually the reason that happens is because I didn't select everything, right? There were some remnants of the original object in there. So maybe in this area here, there might be part of a leaf that it was detected, right? So I might wanna select a little bit more of that leaf. Maybe this area over here was not selected. Maybe I will expand the selection a little bit more by a few more pixels and let's generate one more time. We'll see if that did a better job. So keep that in mind, right? Jeff is asking, is it gonna remove the shadow outside the selection? So it's, it's not, that's a good point. Um, it only, right? Maybe we have to select the shadow, I don't know. Or maybe something in here is still select. Oh, there's a little bit of a leaf here, right? So this, this is definitely something to keep in mind, right? Make sure if you wanna remove something that you're selecting the entire object. And maybe, you know, per Jeff's comment, maybe we do wanna select the shadow. We'll select all of this stuff. Maybe that will help, I don't know. This technology is so new that even I'm still learning um, some tips and tricks for removing and replacing objects. We're learning together. This is fun, right? Sometimes. Let's see what happens. That's a little bit better, except for this thing down here, but it does give you some variations and this one looks a little bit more in line with what we're looking for. So things to keep in mind, right? There's the before and there's the after. I would probably spend a little bit more time you know, working on some of the textures, but there you go. Robert's saying you need to select the shadow. Possibly, I mean, that could have been it. But it also works for replacing objects. Obviously, we saw some of the replacing of the objects uh, just a moment ago. But let's say over here, we wanted to replace this tree maybe with a cactus, for example. So I'm gonna make a very basic selection. Maybe this time I will use my polygonal lasso tool or polygonal lasso tool, as some people call it. Um, and I will just boop and boop, boop. I'm gonna leave that shadow on the right-hand side intact. There we go. And I'm going to write out a cactus. If I can spell it correctly, a cactus. Boop, there we go. And we're gonna see what happens. Again, tech is very new. So we're gonna get some results that don't look that great, but we're gonna get some wonderful results. This, you know, the model, the trained model is always improving, almost daily, I think, I don't know. Um, but there you go, right? We have a cactus. And this is really cool. It's not necessarily if you are, you know, looking to edit a photo afterwards, but maybe you are trying to figure out what your photo shoot's gonna look like and you have an empty room or a bunch of boxes that you want to fill eventually. Um, maybe you're gonna go to Walmart or something and buy a cactus and you wanna kind of get an idea of what that's gonna look like. You can easily do that, right? And in here, we'll do one more before we wrap things up. And maybe we'll do the 
regular lasso tool for this one. Oops. I could have probably ran with that selection, but let's go ahead and just do something like this. And maybe we'll do a fluffy cat. I don't know what this is gonna look like. Whenever we get into the kind of world of animals and people in AI generated goodness, it's hit or miss, at least for now, right? Let's see what happens. Jeff is asking, why are you not using the subject selection tool? I could, um, I'm just trying a, a few different, let me zoom, zoom out there, it's not bad, right? I'm just using a few different selection methods. Uh, the object selection tool right over here, I can definitely use that on the background layer, right? And I can definitely select all these different objects here and maybe I'll select this one just to wrap things up. I'll expand this by, I don't know, 10 pixels or so, and maybe just get rid of that to wrap up this stream. Definitely tune in. Uh, Andrew Hawk Rattle is coming up in just a few, min few minutes with some Illustrator goodness, always a good time. I don't know Illustrator too well, but I always watch Andrew's streams, learn something fancy and new. And um, clearly didn't select all of the object, but you know, this stuff is always evolving. That's why we're in beta. Still, still training these things, um, but that's just about it. So that's gonna wrap it up for me for today. I will be back tomorrow showing you how to expand your images using generative fill and all sorts of other goodie in Photoshop. So thanks so much for tuning in today. Stick around, Andrew Hawk Rattle's coming up in just a few moments and I will see you all tomorrow.